Hi, welcome back to the Woodshop Nerdery. I'm still working on my Stickley Highlands bookshelf build. Today I need to cut the tenons for the styles and rails. In order to do that accurately, I need to make sure to accurately set up the machine to make the tenons. This type of measuring tool is a very common way for woodworkers to set up table saws, but I'm going to try a new and unique technique, or hack, that's not available to most woodworkers unless you're a shopsmith owner. I'm going to be using this tool, which is an adjustable stop collar that lets me precisely set the height of my saw blade. I'm setting up the table saw with my dado stack to make some tenons on the ends of my rails. Normally, I would take a tool like this and then lower or raise the table until I got the height just where I wanted it. But this time, instead, I'm going to use this tool. This is the Shopsmith Micro Adjustable Stop Collar. It allows me to make precision adjustments to the height of my main table. It's made up of two collars, one internally threaded and one externally threaded, and they mesh together. The upper collar contains a set screw for fixing it into position on the leg of the main table. The thread pitch on this is 1 16th inch, so that means if I were to align marking D here, with zero and make one full rotation, I will have changed the height of this collar from top to bottom by 1 16th of an inch. In this case, I reduce the height, but if I turn the other way, I increase the height. Because I prefer to work in metric, this leaves me with a little bit of math to do. I've thickness planed my work pieces to 19 millimeters thick. I want to form a 10 millimeter tenon, so that means I need to remove 4.5 millimeters from each side, which means I need the height of my dado stack to be 4.5 millimeters above the table. So if I set my table height so it's flush with the top of the blade and I zero out the stop collar, that means I need to figure out how many turns to make on the stop collar in order to lower the table 4.5 millimeters. And this is the math I use to figure that out. I know that one rotation is 1 16th of an inch, or 0.065 inches. I can convert that to millimeters by multiplying by 25.4 millimeters per inch to get 1.5875 millimeters. That's the distance in millimeters that the collar changes height with one rotation. I know that I want to travel 4.5 millimeters, so if I divide 4.5 millimeters by 1.5875 millimeters per rotation, I get 2.835 rotations. So I know I need at least two rotations. Then if I take the remainder, 0.835, and multiply that by the 1.5875 millimeters per rotations, that gives me a remaining rotation of 1.325 millimeters. So my final goal is to make two rotations plus 1.325 millimeters. And on the scale, there are millimeter marks at 0.1 millimeter resolution. So if I rotate the collar twice and then use this scale to find 1.325, I'll have my total of 4.5 millimeters of travel. I want to verify the accuracy of 1 16th inch per rotation. So I'm going to start with D here at the zero mark. Then I'm going to take a set of digital calipers lock that height in, and zero it out. Now I'm going to rotate the collar one full turn so that D is back. Take my caliper, move it. So if I change that to decimal inches, that's 0 0.65. That's not quite 1 16th, it's a little more. But if I change it to fraction, and the system is obviously rounding it to 1 16th. So it's a little off, and that's not too surprising, because there has to be a little bit of slop. I think you could probably hear that movement. Otherwise, it would be too difficult to actually turn the threads. There has to be some tolerance there. So this value really should be 0 0.0625. So my measurements are about 30 thousandths of an inch off. In decimals, that's 1.65, it should be 1.587, so I'm about 8 tenths of a millimeter off. That degree of resolution is going to work perfect for my purpose. 
Step one is to install the collar, which I've done down here on the table leg. Step two is I'll adjust the height of the table relative to the blade so that the top of the teeth are flush with the top of the table. Next, I'll unscrew the stop collar so that I have some headroom to turn it in later. I'm going to make sure the area here is clean of any debris or sawdust. Then I'll lower the stop collar and lock it back in. So remember, I need to make two rotations plus 1.325 millimeters. So I've got the zero mark lined up with letter D. So if I turn the collar in one, two times, and then paying attention to the bottom scale, I'm at 1.3, and just a little bit, we'll call that 1.325 millimeters. So now when I loosen my table lock and lower the table, I'll be lowering the table exactly 4.5 millimeters. I'll just let it go all the way down, and then tighten. So if I've done everything right, I should be able to verify that the uh, tip of the blade is 4.5 millimeters above the table. So I'm going to take my depth gauge tool here and my digital caliper set to 4.5 millimeters and just to verify that it's the correct depth. Some of you may be wondering why don't I just put the caliper on the insert and measure directly off the blade. The reason for that is the plate may not be accurately level with the table here in the middle. This is a shopsmith system and the inserts are actually bowed in the middle. So if I take a flat edge and push it horizontally, you can tell that it's not exactly flush. That's the way it's supposed to be. Scott Markwood of Mike Growth Rings did an in-depth detailed video about that issue. I'll link to that in the video description. So that means when using tools to calibrate my blade, I like to make sure they span from left to right across the insert. So I'm not relying on the insert for adjustments. This tool is perfect for that. I verified that it's set for 4.5 millimeters. So let me zoom you in and show you where I'm at. I think it's looking pretty good. And as you can see, as I turn the blade, those outer teeth are just barely kissing the bottom edge of that ruler. I think that's about as good as you can get. Okay, I just ran into a huge advantage of using the stop collar over simply relying on a setup tool and that is the stop collar is going to be repeatable. I've made a huge mistake here. I was intending to set up for a 5 8 inch wide stack and I added the two outer saws but I only added one middle eighth inch saw. So that means I have to do some disassembly here in order to get the correct width set up. I suppose I could try to take off the plate and sneak some blades on the arbor but my preferred method of doing that is to go ahead and take off the table remove the saws and the arbor, take the arbor over to the workbench, assemble the correct thickness, bring it back and put it all together. But that begs the question, how do I get the table back to the same height so that I'm exposing 4.5 millimeters of blade? Because I have my stop collar installed, that's going to be easy as long as that bottom collar doesn't rotate when I take the table out and set it aside. So what I've done is taken a piece of blue painter's tape and lock those in position so that I know they'll be in the same spot when I put it all back together. I don't know if that use of blue painter's tape is Stumpy Nubs approved, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. I'm set up and ready to go, but before I start making cuts on my work pieces, I've got a piece of scrap here, I'm gonna make some test cuts, make sure the measurements are right before I move on.
So the test cuts on my scrap piece worked out great. I've measured it with calipers and everything's perfect. I can move on to cutting the actual work pieces. Okay, I've got all the tenons cut on all of my work pieces and I've measured them with the calipers and they're just slightly over 10 millimeters, which is exactly what I want. But here's where we get to a little bit of a plot twist. I'm not going to be relying on my machine setup to accurately fit these tenons to each mortise. Instead, in a future video, I'm going to be using this shoulder plane to pare down those tenons until they're a snug fit in each of the designated mortises. And that's really where the final precision and accuracy will be realized. Well, that does it for this Woodshop Nerdery video. I thank you for watching. If you're interested in seeing how this project build turns out, please check back in for future videos. Bye.